Okay, so welcome to lesson four, telomeres and aging. And we start to look at some of the application processes of our understandings of how DNA replication works because there are specific factors that we need to consider when it comes to DNA replication that have bigger idea implications, specifically to the idea of life and aging itself. So telomeres are what's called uh, non-coding repeating sequences of nucleotides at the end of each chromosome in a eukaryotic cell. They cap the ends of those chromosomes. So imagine we've looked at DNA replication as a process. All throughout that DNA replication process, we've kind of talked about how that DNA is replicated, the enzymes that are responsible, but we never really talked about the end of that DNA replication component in terms of the end of the nucleotide sequences or the end of the chromosome or the end of the DNA strand itself. So when we consider the end of the DNA strand, we have to recognize what these few words mean. Non-coding means does that it does not code for a protein. And we're going to talk about protein creation from DNA after this lesson in the afternoon. Uh, it is a dense lesson, so I really strongly encourage after lunch, or sorry, during lunch, you get some fresh air, you take a breather, you know, maybe meditate, close your eyes, whatever it is you need to do to refocus your brain, uh, because in the afternoon we have, it's a dense afternoon. So telomeres are going to protect the ends. They kind of form what's called the shoelace ends. And they are, if you think about when you tie your shoes, at the ends you have those plastic uh, wraps around the shoelace to kind of protect that shoelace from fraying. Telomeres kind of perform a very similar function. So telomere is approximately 10,000 base pairs long. It is very, 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 very cool how long they are. And, and there's some interesting components that come up as a result of it. So when you think of the, end, the coding region stopping here, so everything up to that point in some way, shape or form tells your cells to code for a protein, perform actions, what have you. That after, the, after that coding sequence uh, region stops, we get to what's called those repeating telomere ends. And they go on for at least approximately 10,000 bases. And just to kind of give you a little uh, cool insight into it. You all have more telomeres than I do. And I'll talk about why that's the case coming up. So what do telomeres do as a whole? Well, they prevent the chromosome ends from what's called fusing together. And they, they, cannot, they cannot fuse to other telomeres. So when you think about those distinct chromosomes that we have in our body, those telomeres help those chromosomes from attaching to each other because they are quite repulsive of each other. They also help DNA degradation by this enzyme called nuclease. And this nuclease is responsible for breaking down nucleic acids. So specific bonds between those nucleotides along that sugar phosphate backbone, nucleases in fact break down nucleic acids in DNA. And we'll talk about why that's important uh, as we move through this unit. But ultimately it's in an attempt to either destroy uh, invading DNA or to break down DNA that hasn't quite served its function correctly. It also helps with DNA repair as these repair complexes that we talked about in the last lesson, they identify errors in the DNA based on how those telomeres uh, kind of draw them towards where those mistakes are. And so anytime there's a mistake in DNA, telomeres can't really attach on to that mistake end. So these errors are called out to that DNA repair complex and these telomeres help with regards to the repair of uh, errors in DNA. They also help to determine the number of times a cell can divide, and therefore the lifespan of the organism. So I talked about that a little bit earlier with regards to you all having telomeres that are significantly longer than me. It's theorized that the telomere is a component of the aging process, and as you age, You'll, your, the number of telomeres you have on your chromosomes decreases. So as I am significantly older than the vast majority of you, uh, my telomere length on my chromosomal genetic information is significantly shorter than the telomere that you have on your chromosomes. 
So it's interesting how that it can potentially determine how many times a cell can divide, and as a result of that, the lifespan of that organ. Lastly, it prevents the loss of coding DNA during replication. It protects that ge genetic information that's responsible for coding and any type of enzyme, like I talked about with regards to nuclease, uh, breaking down that coding information, it helps protect it during genetic uh, replication. And I'll look at those two questions afterwards because they're kind of big idea questions that um, one of them we don't really talk about specifically with the identification of errors. We don't really look at it, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about it coming up. So uh, just to kind of recap everything we've learned about with regards to DNA replication, that RNA primer or that leading strand has that one prime section and the lagging strand has many of those sections, right? That RNA primer on the leading strand, there's only one RNA primer. From that one RNA primer, continuous flow of copy in the five prime, three prime direction. Whereas on the lagging strand, we have many one prime sections that it has to create that Okazaki fragments to continuously replicate in the five prime, three prime direction as that helicase unbinds that DNA template strand. So DNA polymerase three lays compl uh, complementary base pairs for new strands, works in the five prime, three prime direction. A primer cannot be replaced. So primer can't be replaced the section is lost. So the idea that we have a part of the primer that doesn't really get replaced, right, doesn't really get replaced after it is finished coding, this is where that theory comes into play, that after DNA is replicated, right, after DNA is replicated, that last RNA primer chunk, which in the case of someone or anyone really and truly, uh, it, the last piece of material that needs to be copied is going to be on that telomere. The theory states that, okay, well, that last RNA primer cannot be replaced. That last RNA primer cannot be replaced in that lagging strand of DNA. So anytime it, their lagging strand of DNA gets to the end of the road, the RNA polymer or RNA primase has nothing to attach onto. And so it loses that last little bit of genetic information that RNA primer cannot be replaced on in that lagging fragment. And that's theorized that it is a telomere component and that part gets chunked off. And every time that DNA is copied in the cellular um, replication process, it loses a couple of those telomeres every time. So let's talk about those specific roles because a couple of questions came up that are asking about specific roles of telomeres during replication. So we'll talk a little bit about that now. So DNA polymerase one is unable to replace that final section of RNA primer on that lagging strand like I alluded to. This leads to a small section of DNA remaining uncopied at the end of DNA replication. Why would this be a problem? Well, holy smokes. If we're losing small sections of DNA in each replication, there might be some important information on there. Imagine the end of one chromosome on the lagging strand is responsible for coding a protein that breaks down glucose, for example. That would be a huge issue to not have that information get passed on into that daughter cell. So if approximately 100 base pairs of the telomeres are lost in each replication, after many rounds of replication, you would expect the telomeres to be gone and no longer protect that chromosome. If the repl replication continues after this, the cell will begin to lose that coding section of the DNA that's responsible for, for performing cellular function. This could lead to the loss of the ability of the cell to grow, divide, and metabolize any and all things, aka getting old and slowly, 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 slowly having your cellular processes degrade and fade away, i.e. <laughs> kick in the bucket, for lack of a better word. So it's interesting to consider the idea that these telomeres, they perform a shielding approach, if you will. It's a, it's a shield to that loss of coding information. And once that DNA is consistently uh, replicated over many, many, many cellular replication processes, eventually that telomere uh, is gonna be whittled away and it will no longer be able to defend the uh, inevitable, inevitable, inevitability, if you will. So it's interesting to consider. So the period of time with which this happens is called cell sentience. Uh, or senescence, sorry. This is the total number of times that a specific cell can divide in its lifetime. And it is called the 
Hayflick limit. So this Hayflick limit is essentially the total number of times a specific cell can divide. And it's approximately 50 times for the vast majority of cells. There are several cells that replicate quite quickly and don't really uh, adhere to the Hayflick limit. Uh, and I'll talk a bit about those. But those germline cells, which produce gametes, are unique because they must maintain the exact sequence of DNA from parent to offspring. So when we're talking about those oocytes and those spermocytes, the sperm and egg of male and female, they kind of don't really abide by the same rules that uh, the rest of cells kind of have to listen to because they need to keep that, they need to keep that genetic fidelity over millions upon millions upon millions of creation of, of, of spermocytes in, in males. And oocytes are a little bit different because the female is born with all eggs that she will have. So it's a little bit different. But those gametes have a special enzyme called telomerase and it adds DNA to the ends of chromosomes ensuring that they maintain their length. And stem cells also contain telomerase. And this is an interesting component with regards to embryonic and adult stem cells because it's, it's that key to aging, a lot of people believe, lies in those telomerase enzymes that are responsible for adding telomeres on. Uh, so because there are telomeres at the end of a chromosome instead of chromosome loss, telomeres are lost after each replication, correct? Is it because some people genetically have longer telomeres so they live longer? That's the hypothesis. So telomeres and aging. How does aging work relative to what we understand about telomeres? So as an organism ages, it will continue to reach that cell senescence. And this makes it difficult for cells to function effectively after some of that coding information is now lost once the telomere has completely been cleaved off. So research is being done to fully understand between that connection between telomere length and speed of aging, because some adults have shown a correlation to, uh, to being able to live longer uh, in terms of extending the length of telomeres or extending the, or decreasing the amount of telomeres that are cut off and actual daily activity and exercise. So it's interesting to consider the idea that um, more active people, the more active you are and the healthier diet that you um, abide by, the longer your telomeres might end up being. And it has something to do with the idea that uh, in the absence or presence of certain chemical form or chemical molecules as a result of fitness or as a result of having a good balanced healthy diet, uh, it allows for the telomeres to not be cleaved off in too large of a quantity. Uh, so telomeres replicate with the DNA. No, that's again, right? It replicates it with it until it gets to the end of that lagging strand until it reaches that lagging strand. But at the end of that lagging strand, that RNA primer cannot be replaced with genetic material because it's run out, it's run out of space. The, the template it was using isn't there anymore and it's because those telomeres start to shorten every single process. So several age-related diseases are being examined for telomere length, specifically uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, and then muscular degenerative uh, disorders. They tend to coincide with certain cells not functioning anymore, specifically brain cells. And it's interesting to think about it in terms of if brain cells don't really replicate too, too often, how can understanding telomeres and the length specifically uh, in patients with Alzheimer's, dementia, and muscular degenerative disorders be linked? So it's an interesting thing. It's, it's still very, very, very new in the field of understanding and trying to understand how that actually works. Uh, but it is something that's being explored. Scientists are working on how to add telomerase to healthy cells in an attempt to increase the life, essentially, of uh, people who with longer telomeres. That Again, that's that theory, that idea of having longer telomeres leads to longer life. Uh, this will lead to immortal cells, theoretically. And it will, in fact, reverse effects of aging and diseases that you see as people tend to age. Now, this does not come without challenges. Uh, a lot of issues arise as a result of it. The social, uh, societal, cultural issues arise. Uh, only the wealthy would most likely be able to afford this technology. Uh, certain cultures would then therefore become, or certain groups, sorry, would then therefore become disadvantaged as a result of it, and it could lead to some social uh, issues as a result. Uh, Earth cannot support the billions upon billions of people as is, or barely can support the billions of billions of, of people there as is, Imagine if people stopped dying or a fraction of the population did not die, then you would see a, a skyrocketing population that the earth potentially cannot support. 
these mutated cells can continue to replicate as a result of immortality, right? Because the same sequences and, and structures that are in place to kill a cell, uh, if there are any issues, kind of get janked around as a result of uh, adding telomeres and making that cell immortal. So any mutated cells would potentially be able to propagate. And then ultimately the ethical concerns, uh, many people wonder if we as a species should be able to live forever or not. And it leads to the ethical dilemma of who gets to utilize this, what is it utilized for, and ultimately, is it good or bad? The last thing we'll look at with regards to telomeres is the concept of cancer as it connects to it, uh, because normally non-cancerous cells have a limit as to how many times they can divide before their telomeres are completely utilized or gone. However, cancer cells tend to produce a lot more telomeres, and so eventually they can become immortal. Those cancer cells will continue to consume, 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 and you start to see them stick around forever, i.e. tumors, because they cannot die and they will not die. They just keep adding more and more and more telomeres onto it so they can reproduce and replicate forever, essentially. And so understanding how this information, uh, or understanding how telomeres work can help us to develop new ideas and treatments for cancer that target and inhibit telomerase that allow for the destroying of telomeres in cancerous cells and effectively treating cancer in a way that doesn't involve radiation or any other type of chemotherapy. So um, normally I would post an article onto the classroom, but I'm not going to do that because you all have enough on your plate as is. Uh, so take a look at some of the things that we've covered today. Please read through some of the sections in the textbooks, answer questions, and I'm giving you the rest of this hour to kind of review content as well as ask questions about that content and to work on your culminating, which is due, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of the day today, as well as to work on your assignment, which is due Tuesday next week. So I'll stop recording, answer questions as they come, and we'll go from there.